Alice and Malika, and I'm here on behalf of Absidents to show you how to set up your exam account for your Google for Education exam, level one or two, or Google Certified Trainer. Um, if you are not ready to take the exam, you should still follow these instructions to set up your account, and then you can apply your voucher or pay for the exam at any point in time that you're ready to do that. And sometimes folks say the hardest part is setting up that exam account. So I'm gonna help you with that right now. Um, you wanna go to edu.google.com. Now let me say that again, edu.google.com. You need to open a tab in your Chrome browser and go to edu.google.com. Please go here now using your school account or Gmail account, the account you are going to do uh, your exam with that you wanna be certified with, okay? edu.google.com will bring you to the Google for Education page where you can then select training and you want to select training for educators. Uh, this is to show you how to set up your uh, training account for Google Educator Level 1, Level 2, and Certified Trainer. Once you get here, just know that this is the launch page for the Training Center and Certification Programs. I'm going to direct you directly to setting up your exam account. So we're going to skip the training, which I don't recommend, um, and go right to certification. So either online or in a face-to-face -face setting or a combination of both, you want to make sure you know your stuff and then go to the certification page. When you get to the certification page, click on the certification you want to pursue. And when you get there, you'll see that it gives you a little information about that certification and a link. If you scroll down just a bit, you'll find a link to register for the exam. If you have never signed into an exam account before, it says choose an account, and I'm gonna choose this account, the one I'm signed into, and it will prompt me to set up that uh, certification test taker account. This is done through WebAssessor, so note the website is now moved you to webassessor.com. And you may even want to like drag this down and bookmark it so that it's there for you. Couple things, as you create your login and password, write it down or log it somewhere. If you use contacts, if you use keep, however you keep track of things, write down your the website, the login and the password that you use. Inevitably people forget when it comes time for recertification or uh, to take their exam. The login should mimic what you're signed in as. So I'm signed in as CS Teacher at AM Technology, so I'm going to mimic that. So if you're signed in as um, Mrs. Smith at gmail.com, you're going to put your login as Mrs. Smith at gmail.com. All right, now we're ready to enter our passcode. So you want to uh, go ahead and choose a password that contains at least eight characters and has one uppercase, one lowercase, one digit, and one special character. You might want to pause this video so that you can do that um, because that may take you a minute if you don't already have a password like that. Once you have your password selected, make sure they match when you put them in. And then the secret word can be anything. It just prompts you your memory. Um, it might ask you like, What's the first name of your cat? And I'm just gonna put cat as my secret word. If you ever need it, just write that down too. So you're gonna write down your username. Oops, up at the top, I already have an error. You wanna put the full email address. Note, it must be an email address, okay? So email address, passcode, um, and secret word. Now, now that you have those done correctly, write them all down or print this page when you're done with and then fill in the actual password. Uh, primary phone does not need to be filled out nor fax. You can put the address for um, your school or home. It's up to you. I've never been mailed anything. Um, your state, if you're in the states, you pick your state. Uh, postal code, country, country of citizenship, and then um, you're gonna select your primary relationship with Google. Now that's gonna be educator, if you're a teacher, that's going to do the educator level one exam. 
And the secondary email address can be an email address that you did not use to uh, set up your account. So in this case, I'll use an alternative email. I'll email at email.com. <laughs> so if it's your home or school or a different account. Um, what name would you like to appear on your certificate? Um, so when you do this, you want to make sure you use the capitalization that you want to see on your certificate. If you write lowercase, it will go in lowercase. Um, if you've worked with apps events, of course you have. So you want to select apps events and ask your facilitator for their trainer ID. Um, mine is, it has its own unique code and um, your trainer will have their unique code. So if you're working with a trainer, ask them for their unique ID code because that will help them track their efficacy in terms of uh, exams taken and uh, pass rates. Now, once you have that done, just go ahead and click save and hopefully you'll come to the screen. And that means that you set up your account and it was successful. If you end up back on the you know, registration page, you have an error, just fix it till you get here. Once you're ready to take your exam, and only when you're ready to take that exam, you're gonna register for your exam. So at this point, you might, you might wanna make sure that you know how to log in. So you might wanna log out and log back in. Bookmark the page. Just pay very close attention to, to what your login is, where, how to get here to register for your exam. Because it would be a shame if you're ready to do it and you're just completely lost, you can't find your way here. Keep in mind that if you always go to edu.google.com and work your way forward from there, you can get back there by clicking on training for educators and then go to certification down to exam and then it will bring you into your uh, web assessor account. Okay, So if you do get lost, you forget the link, go back to edu.google.com, go to training certifications, click on the exam link and it will bring you back. When you're ready to register for an exam, there's a registration button up here. Click on it, choose for educators, click on buy now. If you're working with a trainer or partner, they may have a voucher code for you if you've attended a certification boot camp or training. If not, you'll have to uh, add it to your cart, so you have to pick this um, and then check out and pay for it. After you register for the exam, you will get an email that confirms you've registered. That usually occurs within minutes of registration. Within 28 to 48 hours, you receive a second email. That email will be full of all the information you need to take your exam. It will tell you that you need to have a working webcam. It will tell you that you need to sign in to uh, edu exams with google.com. You will need to access this URL via an incognito window, and that can be accessed, um, the three dots in the right hand corner of your Chrome browser will give you a link to a new incognito window. And when you select that, it will get you away from your already logged in account. So when you're taking your exam, you're not you know, mixing with your own drive because you need to log into Google's account in order to take your test. Um, right click on the tab and pin it. So this tab that you log into with uh, the exam account is not uh, does not easily close. We're going to highlight the exam URL and copy that. Go back to our incognito page and paste that in. In some cases, you can right click on a link and um, sign you know go to it incognito. But I show you how to access incognito in case that isn't available for you. Make sure you're using Chrome, that's really important, and then you click on Login Now. And I don't have a valid account, so I won't do that, but they give you your sign-in credentials, so you're gonna to wanna to sign in with your username and the password they provide. Now, you will need to make a new passcode, so make sure you write it down. You will also be required to accept a, a non-disclosure agreement prior to launching the exam, so you can read that. 
And then if you encounter any errors, they have an email you can go to and you can put your email address, your test taker account and what's going on and screenshots if you need to. So make sure you read the uh, confirmation email carefully. And once you get this second email, you will have seven days to take the exam. If you do not take the exam within seven days, it will expire. Go to the test center, incognito, log in, take your picture with your webcam. You wanna keep your webcam on, start your exam. And while you're taking that test, you can mark questions that you can go back to and review at the end. So anything you're unsure about, you can mark. And just make note that when you first start the exam, you'll see like, let's say 20 questions that you have to complete. That is not the entire exam. That's just the first part where you do a selected response. When you're done with that set, whether it be 15 or 20, it will change into a series of scenarios. And for each scenario, you'll have to do four or five tasks. So prepare yourself. Don't think you have three hours to complete those 20 questions. You have three hours, but you're going to complete the first set and then you're gonna have hands-on scenarios. So do what you know as quickly as you can. Get, you know, I know this, boom, get it done. Anything you're unsure about, mark it, complete your test, or review the things that you need to go back to and, and try out at the end. Now, I think that pretty much uh, sums up what you need to do. I wish you the best of luck on your exams. I hope that you'll uh, join us uh, at Apps Events. Again, you can go to appsevents.com and find out where a boot camp is in your area, or you can even host one. Um, but in fact, you may be at a boot camp right now. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, all the best. Uh, take care.